Welcome to this presentation on Plural Effusion. This is still a, a preliminary version of this podcast on Plural Effusion. You should get plenty of good information uh, out of it, but uh, I would definitely supplement this material from the reading in the Learning Radiology uh, book. A Plural Effusion is sort of similar to a pneumothorax. Remember, a pneumothorax is air that's in the plural space, whereas a plural effusion is an abnormal amount of fluid within the plural space. Now normally there's only about 10 or so cc's of fluid within the plural space and when there's more than that we refer to that as a plural effusion. Plural effusions are nonspecific and occur in all sorts of different uh, uh, diseases and disorders. You can see it in uh, pulmonary edema, you can see it in patients with pneumonia, you can see it in patients with neoplasms, you can see it in patients who have pulmonary emboli. So it's not a specific uh, uh, finding but it's something that you need to be able to pick up because it may tell you that there's something else going on. Typically a pleural effusion has the appearance that we see on this uh, illustration there in the right hemithorax, that green stuff, that's supposed to be pleural fluid. And that's supposed to be a typical configuration there with the so-called meniscus sign. And there's an actual chest x-ray showing a meniscus sign. They're well seen on the PA view and that tells you that the increased soft tissue density in the right hemithorax is pleural fluid, that meniscus sign. So remember we only have four radiographic uh, densities so we see that there's too much soft tissue density in the right hemithorax. We see that meniscus, we know that that is fluid in the pleural space. Sometimes uh, you might not be sure that there's a, a, a pleural effusion present or sometimes you may want to determine whether or not the pleural effusion is free-flowing or not. And one thing that you can do is get a decubitus view. And what decubitus means is that the patient is lying on their side as opposed to being upright or lying on their back. This is a right decubitus film, so that means that they're lying on the right side. And the pleural fluid there is tracking up the right lateral chest wall. You can even see a little bit, little bit of it going into the minor fissure. Now if you have a whole bunch of pleural fluid and it completely or virtually completely fills one hemithorax, you can get complete opacification of a hemithorax. And remember, there are two major causes of complete opacification of a hemithorax. And I think we should go ahead and review how you distinguish those uh, two major causes of complete opacification of a hemithorax. So one of those is complete atelectasis of a lung. So if a lung becomes completely atelectatic, what happens is that, the, um, is that the lung takes on soft tissue density. Because there's less stuff in the part of the hemithorax where the atelectatic lung is, remember you've basically deflated the lung, you've sucked all the air out, and, what's happened is that the, uh, uh, and what happens is that you have volume loss there. And as a consequence, the mediastinum will be pulled to the atelectatic lung. So an opaque hemithorax with shift of the mediastinum toward the side of the opacity, that's going to be due to atelectasis. This is one of my favorite little uh, sine loops here. Basically, these are lungs inflating and deflating. And obviously, when the lungs deflate, there's less volume, and they become denser. They become soft tissue density. And that's what, that's what happens when the people who have uh, atelectasis of a lung. The lung deflates, it takes on soft tissue density, the mediastinum shifts toward the side of the increased soft tissue density because there's less volume there. Let's consider what happens when you have complete opacification of a hemithorax due to a large pleural effusion. Well, in this case what happens is that instead of there being less material on the side that is opaque, there is more material on the side that's opaque. You've got all that fluid in the uh, chest that doesn't belong there. So what happens is that the mediastinum gets pushed to the contralateral side. Here's a nice example. This patient's uh, right hemithorax is completely opacified on the uh, uh, chest x-ray. The corresponding uh, CT scan uh, reconstructed in the coronal plane shows that the right hemithorax is actually bigger than the left hemithorax. It's just filled with tons and tons of fluid, and the lung has, uh, has become compressed because of this large pleural effusion. And what is happening to the heart is that it, it is being pushed from right to left because now we have increased material within the right hemithorax as opposed to decreased material within the right hemithorax, as you see in a patient who's atelectatic. 
and these are just some more images of the same thing. Again, I want you to notice how much bigger the right hemithorax is than the left hemithorax. This patient has just completely filled the right hemithorax with uh, a fluid. And you can see that the mediastinum has shifted uh, over into the left hemithorax. If you see such a huge pleural effusion like this, probably the first thing you should think about is that this is a malignant pleural effusion. Sometimes pleural effusions look kind of funny. Uh, you can have pleural fluid, for example, that gets stuck in the minor fissure, and this is an example, or this is an illustration of what that might look like. We're still working on getting some actual radiographs that show these uh, things. But basically what you'll see is fluid in the, uh, in the uh, uh, position of the minor fissure, and this has been called a pseudotumor because what will happen is that when the patient's pleural effusion resolves, the, uh, uh, the soft tissue density will resolve as well. You can also have pleural fluid that is loculated, and basically what this means is that the uh, is that the pleural space has some adhesions in it for some reason or another. Maybe the uh, uh, patient is infected. Maybe there was prior infection. Maybe there was prior surgery, or maybe there's a tumor. Maybe radiation, something along those lines. Maybe there's been some instrumentation, and what's happened is that there have been some adhesions that have developed within the pleural space. And if that happens you can get uh, fluid that gets loculated within those uh, uh, areas that are bounded by those adhesions. One other thing that we have to address is the uh, uh, issue of an empyema. Now an empyema basically is an infection. You can think of it sort of as like an abscess that lives in the pleural space. And This is an example of an empyema right here. One of the things that we frequently wrestle with is trying to determine whether or not a lesion is located within the lung or within the pleural space. And it can be difficult to determine that if you have a lesion that's located peripherally. It's difficult to make up your mind whether it's in the pleural space or in the lung. And let's just go over one uh, way that you can uh, try to decide whether something is in the pleural space or whether it's in the lung. There are more also and I would uh, encourage you to read in your learning radiology book for some of these other ways that we Pleura is an irregular space. It sort of wraps around the lung. In fact, there's some uh, areas where it sort of looks banana shaped. So that's supposed to be a sort of a banana there on the left. So if you have something that's in the pleural space, some abnormality, it has to at least somewhat conform to the shape of the pleural space. So an abnormality in the in the pleura, like a like an empyema, might end up having sort of a banana type uh, appearance. That's different than things that arise in the lung parenchyma. Things that arise in the lung parenchyma sort of start from a very small focus and grow outward. So they tend to be spherical type objects. So if you can determine whether an object is sort of banana shaped or irregularly shaped or looks different from uh, whether you're looking at it from the front or the side, think about it being, think about the uh, abnormality being in the pleural space. Or something that looks relatively round uh, from uh, from multiple different perspectives, that's probably going to be something that arose within the lung. So here's a CT scan of that empyema that we just spent some time looking at. And you can see that there's a large fluid collection there in the right pleural space. And you can see that it does indeed look a little bit like a banana. It has to conform to the uh, shape of the pleural space. This would have to be operated on. They would, uh, The surgeons would take this person uh, to the uh, uh, to the operating room and drain this thing surgically. Now, not everything in the pleural space is a pleural effusion or an empyema. You can see that this person on the uh, right, that there's a marked thickening of the pleura. In fact, the pleura looks circumferentially thickened on the right. Compare the right lung to the left lung. The right lung looks uh, shrunken, and the right pleura, or there's this increased soft tissue density on the, in the peripheral aspect of the right, right hemithorax, which, of course, is where the pleura lives. Now, if I gave you a history that this uh, person uh, had been a uh, had been an asbestos worker, the first thing you would tell me is that the patient had mesothelioma, and that's correct. So, not only can you have pleural effusions give you uh, um, uh, areas of increased opacity within the pleural space and empyemas also, but you can also have malignancies, and one of those is mesothelioma. But you can also have metastases to the pleural uh, space. If you have a very lumpy, bumpy pleura as illustrated uh, here, 
Uh, on the right, you can see a CT scan. This is an axial image, and I've basically just included the right hemithorax. You can see that there's so circumferential irregular thickening of the pleura, um, and you can see that the mediastinal surface is also involved. This is very characteristic of tumor, either a primary tumor like a mesothelioma or metastatic uh, uh, process. So if you see something like that, don't think about pleural eff effusion, think about uh, tumor. That ends our discussion of pleural effusion. Thank you.